Okay, that's a nice tight lid with nice folds, nice finish. All right, it's time to go on with the controller now. And I have these high temperature crimps that are used in pottery kilns for this, for this exact purpose. So I'm going to put a, a crimp on the end of each one of these element wires. And I've stripped one end longer than the other so that I can fold this over. I'm just going to tighten it down with the pliers. And that way I can get twice as much wire inside the end of the crimp. I don't think it's entirely necessary, but I like to do it just to ensure more of a contact area when the when the barrel crimp has been collapsed. I'm going to put these sheet metal screws through the box into the holes here, but I'm going to put a spacer on there which is actually a, a quarter inch nut. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that it it means that the electrical box isn't touching the kiln lid, so there's less heat transfer into it. And the second reason is that the cover plate for the electrical box has a, a bit of a lip that curves over the edge. And moving it away from the corner of the kiln here means that it just fits a little tidy. The kind of controller I'm putting in here is called an infinite control switch. And they're actually made for use in electric kitchen stoves. They're about $30, $35 each, and they're perfectly adequate for this little tiny size of kiln. And I've got these crimp connectors here that are made for this type of connector, and they're also available from an appliance repair store. So I'm going to put this wire onto this crimp lug now. It is actually a, a little bit heavier duty than the regular ones, and they don't cost any more. But one advantage of them is they've got much stronger terminals that have a hole in them if you want this option of using a screw terminal. Uh, the screw terminals are a, a much more positive contact, and for a load like this, where these connections might actually get warm, it's a good idea to have a, a much stronger contact. There, and I've turned these so that they're going along sideways and not sticking down. There's not very much room down in the depth of the box for them. So now I'm going to run the power cord into the box. This is heavy duty extension cord wire, which is stranded number 12 wire. It's a little bit heavier than I need for this size of kiln, but I like to make things with the electrical on the heavy duty side. So I've got 18 feet here, so I've got a nice long flexible cord going to the kiln. There. This middle one here can be very difficult to do up. I wound up having to bend this one up out of the way so I could get the screwdriver on it. And again, I've, I've made the direction of the lugs sideways so that the thing fits neatly in the box. So I'm going to push it down now and just peek inside and make sure that there's enough clearance around the element lead wires. And there's also a decal that came with this one that has a high and low and numbers on it. So I think I'll put the decal on as well.